So, being that the only place I can't reach is his head, I must have to hit it. Of course it is. That's Video Game Logic 101. The one place you can't reach is the one place you have to get to. 102 is the most powerful weapons in the game you can only get once you've already beaten the game. Now I know what you're thinking, because I thought the same thing. Just use the Human Torch and throw fireballs all day. Or just throw fireballs in his face until his life bar runs out. Yeah. There are so many things wrong with this character, I don't even know where to start. How about the fact that you can't fucking fly? You can't even float to the top of the screen, you just hover two feet above the ground. You can't throw fireballs either. Well, you can if you jump and put in a series of combinations, and even then the fireballs head towards the damn ground. Otherwise, he just punches and kicks like everyone else. When have you ever known the Human Torch to throw a punch? Why would he when he can just set your ass on fire? Boy, I'm sure kids were excited to play as a Human Torch who couldn't fly or throw fireballs. Yeah, about as excited as an altar boy being called to a personal conference in a priest's private chambers. How is he getting hurt? He's not even touching the ground! So how do you beat Twinkles? Well, you're supposed to hit it with boulders. What boulders, you ask? Well, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. What? You mean you couldn't see them because of the shitty-ass color scheme? The only reason I figured out those was rocks was because I floated behind them with the human torch and noticed half his body disappeared. At first, I thought it was a glitch until I noticed that the vanishing body parts was curved. You have to knock the boulders into Twinkle's face before he throws another temper tantrum, which sounds easier than it actually is because due to the poor color schemes, you can't really tell if you're close enough to them to hit them, so most of the time you're just swinging at air. So let's recap here. You have to time your jump so you're in the air when Twinkle's pounds the ground, avoid his fist, attacking Mole Man, Flying projectiles until he gets tired. Then you have to line yourself up properly with the boulder so you can knock him in his face before he starts his temper tantrum again. Could this get any more difficult? Well, I guess if they didn't give you enough boulders for you to do it all in one shot. Once you beat Twinkles, you go to an underground cavern stage and a Monster Island stage, which I must say, the visibility on these boards are a thousand times better. Oh, come on! How am I supposed to be able to see the edge behind that waterfall, let alone know you can fall off? Why would you even put that in the game? That's like asking a blind person, how many fingers am I holding up? Just cruel. One of the pluses in this game is that the enemies can hurt each other. It's not something you can really take advantage of since they move too slow to do any real maneuvering, but it does come in handy for things like this. Oh yeah, this looks safe. I'm just waiting for the bridge to collapse from too many people on it. Listen, given all the crap we had to put up with so far, I wouldn't put it past game designers to program that in there. I mean, clearly they were designing this game for a 14-year-old Harvard graduate's whiz kids with an IQ of 180. As I said earlier, each character has their own moveset and special, which, if you manage to get them out, look cool, but don't seem to make any real difference, with the exception of the invisible woman turning invisible. I don't know why they have different combinations for their movesets anyway. This isn't a fighting game where the major challenge of it is learning all the movesets to all the characters. This is what happens when you have a fighting game company make your action game. They fuck it up! You finally get to the Mole Man, and once again, you can't hit him. Even specials don't do anything against him, although clearly I'm running right into him and he's shooting me in the face, somehow magically kicks and punches just go right through him. Just like before, you have to throw objects at him, only this time the objects are mole people. Once the machine is busted up, then you can actually hit him, which at this time you might want to switch to the invisible woman, turn invisible, and whoop his ass. Yeah, I didn't do that. And I died. When you've used up all your lives and continues, Dr. Doom comes out and laughs at your defeat, which is fitting since that's the reaction the game seller had when you asked to purchase this mucus stain. This brings up another problem with this game. There are no saves and no passwords. Sure, you can pick up extra lives and continues throughout the game, but once you run out of both, you have to start all the way from the beginning. Are you kidding me? There are four stories in this game! Okay. 
Let me see if I can break this down for you. Imagine playing Metal Gear Solid on Big Boss difficulty, okay? Now imagine having no special weapons, so the only thing you can do is punch and kick. Now imagine you only have seven continues, you're only allowed to walk and crawl, and on some of the stages I force you to play the game with all the lights in the house turned off while wearing really, really dark sunglasses. Basically, it's like pissing in a shot glass from a 4-4 window while doing a handstand. To the game's credit, it is easier with more than one player since you can't hurt your teammate but the enemy is hurt by everything under the sun. And the sun. This means the game was designed for group play, which is a major problem. Video games are played mostly alone. No one buys a video game with the intent of only playing it with their friends. They buy it because they want to play it. And 95% of the time, they're going to be playing it alone. So when you make a game designed around group play, it pretty much never gets played. And here, there is such a huge gap in the difficulty between single play and group play that they are basically forcing you to work with a group. It's like some secret government experiment to see how well kids are at working on a team. Well, I can tell you the results. They fucking suck at it. The sad part is, the developers probably thought, like the name implies, they created something fantastic. Yeah, they created something fantastic, alright. A fantastic piece of dog shit! Flame on, motherfucker.